Well, just over a week away until City Council will finalize the budget, the first one presented under Mayor Olivia Chow. And she joins me live now with more as the city is trying to tackle this nearly $1.8 billion shortfall. Mayor, good morning. Thanks for joining us again. Good morning, Tammy. Uh, I'll start off. You know, the budget has been out uh, for a, a few days now, and you're, you've been getting a lot of feedback even before the finalized budget was put out last Thursday. What, it, what are you getting the most positive feedback on and what's the most negative that you're getting out of this? Well, uh, what I'm hearing most is that people are excited that we're building housing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money in building housing and helping tenants because tenants are facing evictions. It's so expensive to live anywhere. So in this budget, we have a historic investment to purchase some of the houses to make it affordable so people won't face demo evictions, uh, rental evictions, and all those terrible things that happen. Um, and it build housing a lot faster and a lot more. The second one that is really exciting, I'm hearing people really liking it, is the public transit, TTC. No more fare increase. Lots of people that we hired on, 160, so that you keep good customer services, keep it safe, make it reliable and no fare increase. So that's what people are liking. Mm -hmm. People are saying, hmm, we're not sure about that tax increase, but when I say that it's less than a dollar a day, they go, oh really? It's, the percentage sounds high, but um, Toronto have had fairly low property taxes comparing to all the surrounding uh, municipalities across uh, on, in the GTA. So. We, I inherited a big financial hole, as you remember, $1.8 billion. Right. So I didn't create it. I need to fix it and get the city back on track, which right. is what this budget does. Now, one thing that uh, you know we've heard about even before you presented your final budget on Thursday, and we heard a lot from the chief of police, is the fact that police are getting $12 million less than what they had requested. Chief Ademkew saying that, you know, this is going to force the service to make some very difficult decisions. Do you fear that this will leave the city less safe than it has been in the past? I hope not. Um, they, the police will get another 200 officers coming on this year, so, uh, some uniform, other civilians, and uh, they have an increase of 60 million. The budget is about 1.5 two billion dollars or more so it's about one percent now they might need a bit more I, you know the budget committee didn't think so the staff didn't think so it's going to come to council on the 14th valentine's day um we will be all the councils will have a chance to put in their discussion and we'll see what come out because i've always believed that more brains are better than one, right? Or better than a bunch, of, like, you know, even though it's a budget committee and the staff. So we'll come up with a budget that uh, will find some middle ground, make sure it's balanced and fair. So is there a possibility then police could get more? Well, um, for my budget, no, yeah. but it's coming to council. Okay. I do want to say some, one thing about safety. Yeah. Safety is not just about policing. When I talk to moms that have lost their kids, they say, stronger neighborhood, more after-school activities, uh, social services to keep people out of crisis mode. In this budget, there's a 24-7 Toronto Community Crisis Line. So when people are having a mental health breakdown, they call and we send uh, psychiatric nurse, social workers, people that are trained to deal with it. And there's a large investment, $2 million, to have after-school activities, leadership training, so that young people can, especially in priority neighborhoods where there's gunfights, that they will have something to be hopeful for so that they can train and be the best of who they can be. Oh, right. So uh, that that's also contribute to safety. To safety and, 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 and there's more paramedics and firefighters and all of that. So okay. together, we'll keep our city safe. Now, uh, last week, we heard again from uh, Christian Freeland saying that uh, they will indeed, the federal government will be providing some money, $160 million 
to help asylum seekers find housing here in Toronto and to help Toronto um, deal with the asylum seekers who are already here in, sh in the shelter system. Yes. Um, now, we heard from Krista Freeland when you first asked for this in the summer, she said, absolutely not. There's no more money to give Toronto. How did you come to this agreement then? And, and you said that it's a fully, you know, they fully realized what you asked for, but really it's about $100 million less. Well, actually, there's complicated. They, they paid 100% of what we spent last year, which means they acknowledge mm -hmm. that we need that money. I think what changed their minds is the number of refugees keeps coming. We have a global migration pattern right now. A lot of countries are in di really difficult situation. The war in Ukraine, mm -hmm. what's happening in Sudan, um, LGBTQ people uh, in Uganda facing torture, facing jail, right? They're leaving. They're coming to Toronto, which is a beacon of hope. We welcome them, but we also need to house them, just even for a short period of time, because they, once they get a work permit, they're working. They, they will find housing. So I think the federal government basically look at the numbers and say, well, what they gave us, which is $97 million last year, wasn't enough. They needed to do more, and so they're 100% covering it this year because their fiscal year is different than ours. They've, they're giving us enough for the first quarter, yep. and their budget will come forward sometime in the spring. And my last question, uh, the World Cup. We were just talking about the yes. FIFA World Cup Exciting. coming to Toronto in 2026. Yes. Um, the way that we have the city set up right now, we're dealing with so much construction. We are dealing with traffic. We are dealing with headaches without a World Cup. I know. How are we going to get ready? in less than two years for this. We'll do it. We have to do it because Toronto, the world is coming to Toronto. We're going to put our best face forward. Uh, just Saturday, we did a big pothole blitz, 300 staff. We did over, well, almost 10,000 potholes. We are paving the roads. We are building housing. We are, uh, we uploaded the Gardner and the DVP, so it's going to be fixed better. And we thank the Premier for the New Deal. Um, we will put every, <laughs> every workers, and we're asking Torontonians to give us a hand. Uh, with congestion, is, a lot of it is about investing in public transit. We're going to have to do that. And we have a congestion task force. Yes, I know, because we're building, the, <laughs> we're building the Ontario line yeah. and, you know, short-term pain, get long-term gain. That's the subway system coming in. All right. Uh, Mayor Olivia Chow, thank you so much once again for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you. All right.